Lord, right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before we dive to this lesson, give it an honor, no glory, no infinite praises due to Yahweh. Baha Shem Yahweh Baha Shem HaKadash. Dabba's great master, at all possible, we teach him well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect that scatter abroad, or like the other nations. Shalom, Shalom. And Shalom to the Sir Akim that's out there making their body. I left a sacrifice going out there in the highways, byways, and hedges, proclaiming the truth and teaching 100% truth. Keep doing so to those who may be. Shalom, Shalom. And Shalom to Sir Akwathi, and that's out there reps and the husbands being a pillar of rest. Keep doing so to those who may be. Shalom. And for quick edification, Akio means brethren, and Akwathi means sisters. Sisters, okay? When you put Yim at the end of any Hebrew word, it becomes plural, okay? Yahweh, as it being the Heavenly Father, was the word ignorantly calls God, which his name means in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. He is to exist. Yah meaning he. Uh, uh, Yah meaning he. Hawa meaning existing one. Okay, he's the ancient of days. Okay, Bahashem meaning the name of. Yahweh Shai being only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, was the word ignorantly called Jesus the Christ, which his name means in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. He is to save, or he is the deliverer. Okay. He's the deliverer and savior for the children of Israel only, okay? And Hakadash, being the Holy Spirit or Spirit Holy. And those names that are called on Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and the only begotten Son, okay? And those are the names that you should be called upon during the time of trouble. The scripture said, He that shall call upon my name shall be saved, okay? Not Jesus Christ, okay? Not God. Not Allah, not Allah, uh, not Allah, not Buddha, not no Shiva, okay? It's Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, why meaning and, okay? So, today's lesson is entitled that we are going into, you know, we are going to go from the tail to the head, okay? And uh, the reason for this scripture, for this lesson, is because, you know, we are under the curses, of course, and, um, Scripture talk about how the Lord said he's going to make us a tail. All right. It, okay. Let me find it. KJV. Let's do it around 28 and verse 13. I'm going to get some, uh, start at verse, two, uh, I'm going to start at uh, verse 10. No, I'm going to start at verse 1. Okay, this is basically what would happen if we did what the Lord asked, keep the commandments and not break the first contract, which is the first covenant. Okay, because he found fault with us. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe to and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that Yahweh thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Okay? And this is what's really what we're going to go into in the kingdom right here. This is what we going to uh, be uh born into or go uh going into Salaki, you know, because these heathens are going to be underneath us, all right. And this is the promise that is spoken to the Israelites, okay? And it says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power. Blessed, thou, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and fruit of thy cattle, the, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the basket of thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Yahweh shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out, out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Yahweh shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settest thy hand unto and shall bless thee in the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee. Yahweh shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as, ha as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of Yahweh thy power and walk in his ways. Okay? So, hey, these are the, this is what, this is what would happen if, you know, let's say Israel never went off. This is what we would have been inheriting. 
you know, we would have been over, we would have been uh, over all these nations, you know, we've been ruling the world and all that, but we are under the curses. But, you know, as the lesson I did yesterday, you know, we must, un we must go through wickedness to understand, understand and appreciate righteousness because all of this right here is what happens when we are righteous, we are going to be blessed. We are a blessed people by nature, but hey, right now we're going through our whooping phase, okay? But soon we are going to go, go from the tail to the head, all right? Verse 10, and all the people of the earth shall see thee and thou shalt call Thou art called by the name of Yahweh, and thou shall be, and they shall be afraid of thee. Right? You see, the nations are going to be. This is this is really when you really think about it. You know, like I said not too long ago, this is what we are going to be, be like in the kingdom, blessed. You know, not have to worry about nothing anymore. Not having to worry about uh, wicked heathen oppression anymore. Okay, because it was from the, it was really. For us, the world's made for our sakes. The blessing is for our sakes, okay? We have the birthright, all right? Verse 11. And Yahweh shall make thee plenteous and good in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and the land which Yahweh swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Yahweh shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain upon, unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the, the, of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Okay? Because right now, we borrowing right now, man. You know? You got to get a loan through the bank. You got to go through these damn heathens just to get what you need. You know? We, are, we once was a people where we were the ones lending. Okay? Now we the ones borrowing. All right. In verse 13, and Yahweh shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only us like, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be it beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of Yahweh thy power, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Okay. So hey, the Lord just made it clear as day, you know, He gonna make us the head, okay? But right now we the tail. You know, for the Lord's reasons, okay? Not, uh, you know, ultimately because we went off. But, hey, we got to understand, we got to understand wickedness to be able to appreciate righteousness, man. Okay, so that's why we in this lower state. Because, hey, we are going to appreciate righteousness, man. You know, be able to live without being in sin, man. We are going to be able to appreciate that, okay? We are constantly, daily, daily fighting to, uh, fighting this good fight. You know, practicing the righteous acts, okay? Because, hey, we, we trying to make it, okay? But verse 15 tells you, in verse, or verse 15, it says, But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh thy power, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, so right now we are cursed, okay? We had to go through the, 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 the hell phase, you know, because like I read in the scripture in the second Ezra seventh chapter, it says, "How shall this king? How shall this kingdom be given to a man if he never been through nothing?" You know, right now we going through our phase right now where we getting whooped by the Lord because hey, we went off, we broke the first contract. We ain't, the Lord ain't break the first contract. We did. He found fault with us in Hebrews eight. Okay, it tells you that. All right. So, but the point is, you know, we are going to go from this tale. You know, that we're in, which is the curses, and go to the head, you know, which is the blessings, all right? So, we're going to go into uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, because, hey, the Lord is going to choose us. The Lord chose us, and he said he never changed not. Isaiah 14, and verse 1, all right? And it says, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Okay. Hey, the Lord would have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. Okay. Because, hey, what the Lord is going to do, he's going to put us on top. He's going to make us the head. Okay. And it says in verse 2, And the people shall take them and bring them to their places. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the place and in the land Yahweh for his servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Right. 
And this is what's coming in the second covenant, okay? Because when you read in uh, Amos 9 and uh, 11, I believe, it says the Lord is going to seal up that breach in the tabernacle of David, okay? He's going to bring us back together, okay? And what did the tabernacle of David consist of? You know, slaves, you know, rulership, dominion, you know? And that's what we are going to go back into, you know, because we're going to do what with the with our captives or with our servants, it says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for its servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Who's our oppressors right now? These heathens, man. Okay. These heathens are. Because you're going to 2nd uh, Ezra 8, I mean 6. It's like yeah. 6 in the verse um, 54 and it says and after these Adam also whom thou madest Lord over all o, so like Lord of all thy creatures of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen all this have I spoken before thee O Yahweh because thou hast made the world for made us the world for our sakes as for the other people which come of Adam Thou hast said they are nothing but like unto the, like an, unto a spittle, and like and has likened the abundance of them to, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Yahweh, behold the heathen; these heathen which have been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover. Are we are given into their hands? If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? Okay, and then the letter goes on into that uh, parable with the city that is built upon a broad field. You know, which hey, we must go through these times, through these trials and errors, to be able to appreciate righteousness. But the point is, these heathens, you know, are ruling over us, and they got they are our oppressors, especially Esau, Edom. And the top chief tribe, Amalek, which is you small hatters, you 1948ers, okay? But we are going to rule over our oppressors. That's why we're going to go from the tail to the head. Go from oppressed to be the, being the oppressors, okay? Meaning what? We are going to be oppressing you nations in the kingdom, okay? With a righteous oppression anyway, you know? Because, hey, we're going to be instituting the law, statute, commandments of Yahweh Shemi Awashai, okay? There's nothing but the scriptures, nothing but the truth. All right. Um, that's it on that. Now we're going to get the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. 30 and um, I'm going to start at verse 3 and go to 18. And the reason it says, I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, it looks like you. And it says, the word of the word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh power of Israel, saying, Write write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in the book. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, if you read this in a different version of what does it mean when it says turn to captivity, okay, um, it says, uh, where's where's a good one? At? It says right here, basic English Bible. For see, the days are coming, says says the Lord, when I will let the fate of my people Israel and Judah be changed. Says the Lord. That's not a good one. Let's try to uh, go to the Bible app real quick. Jeremiah thirty. I'm gonna read it from here. Read all the scriptures from here. Salakia. Like Compare. It says, for this time has come, this is NLT, when I will restore the fortune of my people of Israel and Judah and will bring them home to this land that I gave to their ancestors and they should possess it again. I, Yahweh, has spoken it. Okay. The easy version. It says, uh, I'm going to start it. Uh, AMP. It says, for no well the days are come, says the Lord, when I will release from my captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Right, and this is basically speaking about how the Lord is going to free us out of captivity from being oppressed by our enemies, okay? 
but it is spoken in the scriptures, okay? That's the turning of the captivity, all right? And the Lord said that he's going to do that in the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Because let's get it. Deuteronomy 33. And, and it says, Then that then Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity. Let's get some. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 1 on this. And it says, Shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither Yahweh thy power hath driven thee, and shall return unto Yahweh thy power, and shall obey his voice. Which we are doing that. We are returning to Yahweh by Hashem Shai to obey what the Lord wants of us, okay? Because hey, we, we messed up, okay? That's repentance, all right? And it says, <clears throat> And shall return unto Yahweh thy power and shall obey his voice according to all that I have commanded thee this day, thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity. And have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Yahweh thy power has scattered thee. Okay? So, hey, the Lord is going to turn the captivity, meaning what? He's going to free us, redeem us. Okay? That's what Yahweh Shah's name stands for. He is the Savior. Yahweh Shah is going to save us out of our captivity, save us from being oppressed. All right? Verse uh, 4 If any of thine. If any of thine been be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, for this will Yahweh thy power gather thee, from this will he fetch thee. Okay, meaning what? The Lord is going to bring us back together. Okay, the hopeful elect. All right, the Lord is going to beam up the elect or wherever they at. Okay, but mainly the salvation is going to take place within America. But wherever the hopeful elect is scattered at, the Lord is going to beam them up. All right, just like you got two thirds everywhere. You know, you got hopeful elect scattered abroad around the world. That's why the Lord said he would fetch thee. Verse 5. And how thy power will bring it, bring it thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do good, will do thee good, and will multiply thee above thy fathers. And how will thy power will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy power and all thy heart and with all thy soul, and thou mayest live. And how will thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee with which persecuted thee. So you go back into that Jeremiah 30 and uh, where it says, it says, For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh thy power, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, and saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Okay. Hey, the Lord is going to return us, meaning what? He's going to free us out of our captivity, okay? He's going to make us go from the tail to the head, all right? Verse 4, and these are the words of that Yahweh spake concerning Israel, concerning Judah. But thus saith the Lord is going to take us trouble. But verse 8, and it says, for it shall come to pass that day, said Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yahweh their power, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. And that's the scripture proving that King David is going to come back. You know, he's going to be under Yahweh Shai, all right? But the point is, you know, the Lord is going to free us out of our bondage, okay? Because we are in, in, in spiritual Egypt, part two, okay? And this is... um house of bondage, okay, house of affliction, all right, verse 10, all right, because that's the scripture that proves that, hey, the Lord is going to free us out of our captivity, go from the tail to the head, because a hey, King David was a good man, was a righteous man in the sight of the Lord, all right, verse 10, therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh, Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be in quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Right? And the Lord is going to give us rest on all sides. Because I did a lesson not too long ago 
Solomon's kingdom is basically a precursor to what's to come. You know, King Solomon's kingdom is a, is a precursor to what's to come for the Israelites. Because how many years did King Solomon have peace? For 40 years. Okay, that was a symbolic um, precursor or foreshadowing of what the Israelites are going to go into. You know, we are going to have peace on all sides. Okay, that's why it says I shall be in rest and be quiet. We ain't going to be afflicted or oppressed anymore by you heathen nations because we are going to go from the tail to the head. All right. Uh, verse 11. For I am with thee, said Yahweh, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all the nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. And you read this in a different version. All right. NLT, for I am with you and will save you. Says Yahweh, I will completely destroy the nations where not where I have scattered you, but I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but with justice. I cannot let you go unpunished. Right. So hey, the Lord basically saying, you know, hey, we gonna have to be corrected, okay? Because we went off ourselves, you know. Even us, us, and that's in this truth, we still gotta pay for certain things, you know. You think because you got this truth, you think you go uh, uh, um, exempt from. Getting your ass kicked by the Lord? No. Okay, we did some things that's worthy of death, man. Okay, and what the Lord might do to you is probably slight compared to what he finna do to the two-thirds, man. Okay? Because, hey, at the end of the day, you know, the Lord said we ain't gonna go unpunished. All right? We, we, gotta, we gotta get whooping. We gotta get a whooping, you know? So, um, let's sit on that. Uh, let's jump down to verse 18. And the reason it says in verse 16, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all they that prey upon thee will I give for thee a prey. So, hey, we the tail right now. We getting our ass kicked. You know, we going through our affliction with you other heathens and stuff like that but then the road's gonna get reversed and we're gonna be kicking your ass in the kingdom giving y'all them lashes on the back all right verse 17 for i will restore the health unto thee and i will heal thee of thy wounds said yahweh because they have they called thee an outcast saying this is zion who no man seeketh after okay because they these other heathen nations look at us as we are nothing okay they repute us as nothing, okay? Verse 18, thus said Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, okay? So, hey, the Lord is going to bring us, you know, the Lord is going to exalt his people, okay? Because they... Right now we are a base, and you got certain Jakes and Israelites. I mean, certain Jakes that's in the truth that's trying to exalt themselves now. Why you can't? Why did the Lord say, "Wait upon me till I rise up to the prey"? Okay, the Lord is going to rise up to the prey first, then make us rise up to the prey. That's why it says the scripture say, "He that is a, a a base shall be exalted." Okay, meaning what? We gonna have our chance to kick these heathens' ass. All right, you know I can't wait for the kingdom, man. You know, because they let you even go off right in front of me. That's an ass kick. <laughs> okay? That's what happens when you go from the tail to the head. All right? Because we are set on low. You know, as the scriptures say, hey, we, we are borrowers right now, man. We used to be the lenders. All right? But soon we are going to be the lenders back again. All right? Forever and ever. All right? So, that's it on that. And it's uh, concerning, you know, having slaves in the kingdom. We are. Because that's what happens when you go from the tail to the head. You possess slaves. This is Revelation 13 and uh, 9. If any man have an uh, ear, if any man have an ear, it's like if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth unto captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay. It's basically that we not go into captivity. You know, with the force of the sword on our back, yeah. You Edomites, okay? You other heathens, all right? Going to Psalms 83. Hey, this is evidence that you damn heathens 
conspired against the Israelites, man. This is a Hebrew, I mean, Psalms 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thy enemies have made a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? The Israelites. Okay? You you damn heathens, especially you Edomites. All right? You 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 conspired to, to have the Israelites put out the earth. Okay? Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That's what you, that's what you heathens be trying to do. Okay? That's why, you know, you, 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 you heathens, especially you Edomites, you top tribe Amalek, poison the water. You know, especially where Jake is, man. You, you, you poison the earth. You know, you cut all the trees down in the hood so it can be hotter in the hood. All right? Oh, it's another couple things, you know. You, 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 you charge Jake out his ass just to stay somewhere that's run down. Okay? Verse continue on, and it says, They have said, Come and let us cut them off of being a nation, that the name of Israel may not be not may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against us. The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites of Moab, the Harganes, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek. Okay. So hey. There you go. Esau is mentioned twice, sir. How is Esau mentioned twice, sir? Edom, which is, which is, you know, means red. But Esau, Edom, Amalek. Amalek is the grandson of Esau. Esau, Edom. All right? This, this nigga mentioned twice in her. <laughs> so you you, you devils, man, you you you, you went hard for uh, to oppress Jake, man. And you other nations did, too. Y'all not going to get slides. It's going to slide with that, man. But the point is, hey, the Lord, all these nations that's mentioned here, y'all gonna be the tail in the kingdom, man. All right? So that's it on that Revelation 13. Because all you nations that, you know, led us into captivity, especially you Edomites, you go into captivity with the sword, the force of the sword, man. All right? He that killeth with the sword must be what? Killed with the sword. All right? It's 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. All right? 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, and the reason it says, But that is as written, I have not seen, nor have, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh have prepared for them that love him. Right. The things that the Lord has prepared for the Israelites, you know, going from the tail to the head, all right, going from peasant to glory, or going from a base to exalted, okay, going from weak to powerful. Okay, going from split, scattered to together, all right, because the Lord is going to bring us back together on the scale that's that's beautiful, man. Okay, we are no longer going to be oppressed. We're gonna be the ones giving out the oppression. Okay, our righteous oppression. All right, it's nothing but the truth. Cause hey, these these are the things. Hey, we we can we can we we see these things and we believe these things, but to, to actually go through it and see it happening, hey, we are gonna be amazed how powerful we gonna be in the kingdom, man. All right, all right. So let's sit on that. Let's get Amos nine and eleven. They're speaking about you know how the Lord is gonna bring Israel back together. This is Amos nine and eleven. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Okay, because, hey, we are falling, okay? We are scattered around the world, okay? Hey, some of our people bugged out on drugs. But continue on, and it says, And close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, okay? So if you go back to the rulership of King David, you would then understand how powerful his uh, dominion was, man. He had slaves, you know, he had, you know, he was exalted. He had the glory. Okay, he was blessed. Even though King David did go off, but the Lord, but the point that made King David so good wasn't enough for his killings. It was because he was a man after the Lord's heart. All right. But verse twelve, come, this is what happens when you the head now. This is verse twelve, and 
they and said that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, say uh, Yahweh, that doeth this. Okay, so hey, in the kingdom of heaven, you heathens, you, you, you Edomites, you other heathens, y'all going to captivity, man. Slavery, okay? Because hey, you oppressed us, now it's time for you to get oppressed in righteousness, especially you Edomites, man, because y'all really deserve it, to be honest, okay? The, the most the atrocities that you damn Edomites have done, man. Y'all gonna get it the worst in the kingdom, man. How y'all gonna get it the worst? Because y'all the only nation of people that's not promised any kind of uh any any kind of benefit in the kingdom. Y'all gonna get it the worst. But you other heathens, y'all gonna get your ass kicked too, man. Alright. Let's get Jeremiah twenty nine and fourteen. Jeremiah 29 and 14 and the reason it says <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 12 and it says then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you, saith Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, saith Yahweh, and I will bring you again unto the place wherein, place which I caused you to be carried away captive. So, hey, we, our home, our original state of place, Jerusalem, the Lord is going to set us back in there, the place flowing with milk and honey, all right? But the thing is, you know, the Lord is going to turn again our captivity, meaning what he's going to turn away our captivity, meaning what he's going to release us. OK, he's going to free us, redeem us. OK, through his only begotten son, you have a shot. All right. Right now we are going through our afflictions right now. But the point is, you know, we are going to no longer be in captivity because hey, the Lord is going to save us. OK. But kind, that's it on that. All right? Let's get the uh, book of Psalms 53 and verse 6. Psalms 53 and verse 6. And the reason it says, <clears throat> Oh, that nation of Israel will come. Salakia. It says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when Yahweh bringeth back the captivity of his people Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Okay, because yes, we are going to be glad because we are going to go from tail to head, go from uh, lowly to high esteemed. Okay, because we are a high esteemed people. That's why these heathen nations oppress us like how they oppress us. Okay, they like to take your uh, self esteem away, make it seem like you ain't shit. You ain't supposed to be royalty. You ain't supposed to have this. Okay. We just read in the scripture that the Lord don't look at the other nations like that. He only look at the Israelites like that because you go into Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It tells you we are a special people unto the Lord himself. All right. So let's sit on that. And I already read Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1 through 3. The turning away the captivity and how the curses are going to go upon the heathens. Okay. So. That's been this lesson, man. Lord willing, this is edifying to those who may watch, giving our honor and our infinite glory and praises due to Yahweh, Baha Shimi Abu Shai, Baha Shimakakadash. Till next time, I'll see you in the video. Shalom, Kamashurala, Bada Boy.